Hey everybody, so I get a lot of questions from students and one of the most common questions I get is what IDE do I use? Students always want to know. Now if you're not familiar with IDEs, an IDE is an integrated development environment. It's basically a program that brings together text editing, code completion, tech, you know, highlighting of, of code, and it also usually provides a nice GUI interface for compiling your program, for debugging your program. And the idea is to bring everything together into one program to make it easier to get up to speed quickly and to produce code quickly. So over the years, I've used many IDEs. Eclipse, Xcode, NetBeans, Visual Studio, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, uh, Arduino. There are a lot that I haven't used. And each IDE has different features. It has different advantages, different things that tie, some are better for certain languages than others. Some are specifically designed for certain languages. Others are pretty language agnostic, like Eclipse has plugins for just about any language. And IDEs can be super useful. But for beginning programmers and even some experienced programmers, I often think it's better not to use an IDE. One reason not to use an IDE when you're beginning is that IDEs, their whole point is to hide stuff from you. They hide a lot of the details of what's going on to make it easy. But for students and new programmers, I actually don't recommend using an IDE at all. And the reason is that I've noticed that over the years, students that learn on IDEs and that are, and are kind of dependent on IDEs tend to be weaker programmers. Okay, so there's, there's some reasons for this. One of the reasons is that IDEs tend to hide information from you. And when you're learning, that's actually, it may make it easy to get started, but the last thing you want is to not understand what's really going on in the system that you're learning. It's the same reason why they tell kids who are learning math not to become too dependent on calculators. Is they be, it becomes a crutch and it becomes something that they need and they depend on and they don't realize that there's a lot they can do in their head and that they can do by hand. And so it becomes this thing that they feel like they need even when they, they shouldn't need it. And IDEs can be the same way for programmers. The, the second reason that I'm not a fan of IDEs is that they don't always play well with version control. The settings tend to be stored in a format. When something gets messed up, Either you misconfigured something or your project file got corrupted or something like that. It's often very hard to figure out what went wrong. And often people who use IDEs, something gets corrupted, gets really messed up. What you're going to find people doing is they basically have to blow away their project file, recreate the project, and that's a real hassle. And so, so I'm actually not a fan of IDEs for that reason as well, because you can get yourself tangled up into messes that are sometimes hard to get yourself out of. So what do I recommend? So I recommend a few things. One, I recommend finding a really good text editor. Currently, I use Atom. I've also used TextMate. I've used Sublime Text. Those tend to be my, eh, probably my top three. So those ones work great. One main thing is to make sure that you have a text editor that's going to do syntax highlighting for you. It's also worth making sure that you're familiar with a number of text editors that don't require a graphical user interface. So for example, VI, Nano, Pico, because sometimes you're going to have to modify code and you're going to be SSH'd into another machine. So even though I don't necessarily think that that should be your go-to, there are some advantages to having syntax highlighting. It's still really useful to be able to quickly modify code in the terminal. Second, I recommend that you get a good build system. So this could be Make, this could be Rake, this could be Ant. So you really should know Make, it's ubiquitous. Ant is, Ant is capable. I don't, I'm not crazy about Ant because I don't like editing XML files, but, but Ant is a very capable option, common in Java projects. Maven is also really popular, but it's probably overkill for most simple student projects. You also have Rake, which is very much like Make, but brings a Ruby flair to it. So I, I really like Rake. Anyway, the point is, is that you have a lot of different options. The main thing is to use a build system that allows you to automate repetitive tasks so that you don't end up doing the same thing over and over again, typing in a ton of commands. You want to be able to run tests quickly. You want to be able to build all of your different artifacts quickly. You don't want to spend a lot of time messing around because you're going to make mistakes. If you do anything that's repetitive in your build process and your, and your development process, you're, you're going to mess up at some point. And so a build system is just a no-brainer. You really want to have a capable build system that allows you to automate your common tasks. Third, I recommend learning GDB or some other terminal debugger. Students are always really nervous about debugging in the terminal, but it's a really powerful way to do things. 
I've made a few videos about using GDB. Feel free to look into them. Uh, let me know if there are others that you'd like to see, but debugging in the terminal also allows you to automate tasks that are hard to automate in many IDEs, where you actually do have to do everything manually. So fourth, it should be pretty obvious from all my other advice that I'm a fan of the terminal. I recommend you become familiar with the terminal. You're com you get comfortable with it, and this is gonna allow you, one, it's gonna keep you grounded in reality so that you know what's going on in all each stage of your, of your development cycle. But the terminal also, it's really powerful. It's gonna encourage you to automate things that otherwise you might end up doing manually, and in the long run, it'll save you a lot of time. And my fifth and final recommendation is that you find a text editor that brings these things together. So this is kind of like an IDE, but it's not. But basically find a text editor like Atom that allows you to bring a terminal window in right, right next to or right below the code that you're working on. This allows you to do debugging, testing, compiling, linking, packaging your code up, all of these things without switching windows. And having an editor like this gives you most of the same productivity advantages you get from an IDE, just without a lot of the magic that can make your life more difficult and allowing you to keep everything very automated. So to wrap up, IDEs are great. They're useful, they're convenient. I occasionally use them myself. Many professionals use them to good effect, but for students and beginners, I don't recommend you use an IDE. I often don't use an IDE for many of my projects, especially projects where the automation is requires some flexibility and a lot of customization. It's just easier to not use an IDE. But as a learner, it's just important that you take your time, do it all, learn, learn how all the pieces are working, take the time to really understand what's going on, and then, and then save the IDE for when you're just trying to save time. When you fully understand what's going on, it's just a convenience thing, and you can make an informed decision that's not gonna get you into trouble down the road. And even then, you might find that you like having full control of the process. And you may be like me and not use an IDE most of the time. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Until next time, I'll see you later.